A lot's happened since the release and publishing of that bombshell Wall Street article that exposed Bobby Kotick's role in the awful culture of harassment, misconduct, abuse, and discrimination that has permeated Activision Blizzard for many, many years. An article published by Kirsten Grind alongside Ben Fritz and Sarah E. Needleman. This is the article in question. And just to quickly summarize stuff that was exposed through this report, more harassment and discrimination allegations against numerous Activision-owned studios like Sledgehammer Games and Treyarch. It was highlighted how when J. Allen Brack was fired as a scapegoat after the DFEH lawsuit and Activision assigned two co-leaders, Mike Ibarra and Jen O'Neill, male and female, they were not paid equally with the female being paid less. This is a company that's facing mass scrutiny because of discrimination and pay disparity, promising to do better only for them to do exactly what they're being accused of while they're being accused of it. And after Jen O'Neill resigned from the company, sick and tired of dealing with their bullshit, she revealed that she was harassed earlier in her career in Activision, and not much was done about that. And then that brings us to Bobby Kotick himself, who faces a slew of allegations, as reported by the Wall Street Journal, which goes into detail about how he knew about abusers and often shielded them and ignored victims. Bobby Kotick also hid harassment allegations from the board of directors. He interfered with the firing of a harasser, Dan Bunting, co-head of Treyarch, despite HR and supervisors' recommending that he be fired after an investigation in 2019. Bobby Kata came in and said, no, no, we're going to keep him. Given how much money Dan Bunting has made the company through the Call of Duty franchise, of course, Bobby Kotick would prioritize keeping an abuser on board instead of looking out for the human beings under his leadership. And as if all that wasn't enough, Bobby Kotick himself is being accused of being a harasser and abuser, having taken former Blizzard co-lead Jen O'Neill to a party where there were scantily dressed strippers and where a DJ encouraged females to drink more so men could have a better time. Bobby also at one point left one of his assistants back in 2006, a voicemail where he threatened to have her killed, and in 2007, Bobby got a flight attendant fired because she reported Bobby's private jet pilot of harassing her, so he punished the victim and let the abuser go. So yeah, these accusations are as bad as they can get. Last but not least, it turns out that the letter Fran Townsend sent to employees, a letter so awful and so dismissive of the harassment allegations that it instigated Blizzard's first walkout, was actually written by Bobby Kotick. He had Fran Townsend send it out to everyone so she would take the fall. And she's awful, by the way. She deserves all the backlash. But the letter itself was written by Bobby. He shielded himself through Fran, and then he pretended like he was sorry about that statement to do damage control, as if he weren't the one who wrote it. So yeah, this guy is a real piece of work. He's a real snake. Since then, Activision Blizzard employees have been protesting more fervently, with a better ABK tweeting that they have in instituted their own zero-tolerance policy, calling for CEO Bobby Kotick to be replaced. And on top of all that, this instigated a second Blizzard walkout. We're staging a walkout today. We welcome you to join us. And despite the short notice, a decent more than 100 people showed up at the walkout, which is impressive considering it was called two hours before it started, and most employees are working from home. And the Wall Street Journal itself wrote its own article about how Activision Blizzard employees are now demanding that Bobby Kotick tender his resignation as CEO of Activision Blizzard, as he has proven to be an ineffective leader. Sure, he knows how to make money, but that's not what makes a good leader. A good leader knows how to both lead the business successfully and lead its people and take care of its people. From there, more news broke out about the whole Jen O'Neill and Mike Yabara situation. This is something that I haven't covered before. Here's IGN's full article in question, and Mike Yabara in a Slack channel sent messages to employees trying to clarify what happened and said that Jen and I shared with management that we wanted to be paid the same to co-lead Blizzard together. Jen and I were both on existing contracts. I ran Battle.net and online products, and she ran Vicarious Visions, so our pay was different. You've got a 
love how he specifically uses the word different instead of flat out saying she got paid less. The first time both Jen and I were offered a new contract, it was the same across both of us for the new co-leader of Blizzard role, so our compensation was going to be the same, basically making it seem like it just took a little bit of time, but eventually Jen was offered equal payment as Mike. But it turns out Mike was downplaying the situation with Jen O'Neill coming in and saying, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, there's an important bit of context that's missing here, and here's how IGN described her clarification. Jen O'Neill seemingly sought to clarify the situation further, adding details that Yabara had not mentioned, saying she didn't want to be involved in a debate on Slack and that she hadn't received an equivalent offer until after she had tendered her resignation. This is important. It took Jen O'Neill threatening to leave the company for Activision to finally be like, okay, fine, we'll give you the same pay as Mike, which should have been a given considering the two held the same job, co-leader of Blizzard. There was absolutely no reason for equal pay to be delayed in any way, shape, or form, and the fact that it was only after she tendered her resignation that the equal pay offer was made goes to show how much discrimination has seeped into the company and how much discrimination there still is in the company's leadership. Here are some direct quotes from Jen. When Mike and I were placed in the same co-lead role, we went into the role with our previous compensation, which was not equivalent. It remained that way for some time, well after we made multiple rejected requests to change it to parity. Now, Jen does point out that Mike joined her in requesting the company that the co-leaders be paid equally, given that they're holding the same job with similar responsibilities. Her statement then continues with, while the company informed me before I tendered my resignation that they were working on a new proposal, we were made equal offers only after I tendered that resignation, and she emphasized that she did not want there to be any misunderstanding about when I was offered equivalent compensation. So yeah, she doesn't want any aspects of the discriminatory circumstances here to be downplayed in any way, shape, or form. Now, since the bombshell Wall Street Journal article, Activision Blizzard has been on the defensive, issuing a number of statements where they deny the allegations, where they try to discredit the article and continue to be in defense of Bobby Kotick, despite the disgusting allegations levied against him. For example, this is a statement from November 16th, 2021, a letter that opens with, we are disappointed in the Wall Street Journal's report, which presents a misleading view of Activision Blizzard and our CEO, which has the exact same tone that the letter sent by Fran Townsend, actually written by Bobby Kotick, had when they tried to completely discredit the DFEH's report in their lawsuit against Activision Blizzard that kickstarted all of this only for employees to come out and corroborate what the DFEH reported. So, yeah, if they expect anyone to believe that the Wall Street Journal has presented a misleading view of Activision, Blizzard, and our CEO for a single second, then they're truly truly delusional. Bobby Kotick also told employees in a video, anyone who doubts my conviction to be the most welcoming, inclusive workplace doesn't really appreciate how important this is to me, which low-key sounds like a veiled threat, but at best, it's him throwing a tantrum and being upset that people don't believe in his conviction to pave the road to a safer, better work environment when he's been actively working against employees and their demands to pave the road for a better Activision Blizzard, hiring union-busting firms, shredding and destroying evidence, you name it, trying to silence employees through coercive tactics. I mean, come on, really? You're going to sit there and try to act like your convictions mean anything at this point? You actually expect anyone to believe that you care more about employees than money, the standing of executives, and the standing of the corporation? Now, it's not just the Activision Blizzard community and Activision Blizzard employees who have been speaking out. We've also been seeing executives from other major gaming corporations like Sony and Microsoft speak out. The heads of PlayStation and Xbox have both spoken out with scathing criticisms against Activision Blizzard, relaying that they're deeply disturbed. Here we have a post from Bloomberg editor Jason Schreier who tweeted, PlayStation boss Jim Ryan slammed Activision Blizzard this morning, writing in an email to staff that he was disheartened and frankly stunned by this week's news, and also said, we do not believe their statements of response properly address the situation. And he didn't just reach out to employees, he also directly reached out to Activision Blizzard itself, according to Jason, who also tweeted in the email to staff seen by Bloomberg, 
Ryan said that PlayStation reached out to Activision Blizzard shortly after yesterday's article asking how they plan to address what was reported. So here's the Bloomberg article in question, and scrolling down, you'll find direct quotes from Ryan who wrote how disheartened and frankly stunned the article was to read, and that Activision has not done enough to address a deep-seated culture of discrimination and harassment. We outreached to Activision immediately after the article was published to express our deep concern and to ask how they plan to address the claims made in the article. We do not believe their statements of response properly addressed the situation. Jim Ryan also emphasized to staff that Sony Interactive Entertainment is committed to ensuring our community of developers and gamers feel safe and respected and providing a secure work environment for every employee. It's not hard to reason why this is such a big deal. Sony's had a close relationship with Activision for many, many years. PlayStation in particular has been the platform that Activision has focused a lot of their exclusivity on. Many of their games would often feature exclusive modes and content on PlayStation platforms. And as Kirsten Grind put it in her tweet here, Activision publishes most of its games on PlayStation consoles, so kind of a big deal. And if Sony and PlayStation leadership are serious about holding Bobby Kotick's feet to the fire, then this could affect their relationship and it could potentially be a detriment to the Activision Blizzard business. But that is if Jim Ryan and Sony and PlayStation leadership plan to go beyond a sternly worded email to Activision Blizzard and a reassuring message to employees. Now, it's not as if PlayStation doesn't have a history of delisting major games in the past over controversies. Recall that Cyberpunk 2077 was at one point removed from the PlayStation Store because of how poor the state of the game was at launch. Moving past Jim Ryan, Xbox boss Phil Spencer also joined the chorus of industry professionals criticizing Activision Blizzard, telling staff in an email obtained by Bloomberg that Xbox is evaluating all aspects of our relationship with the embattled publisher. This is also a big deal given that Xbox is one of three major console gaming platforms, and given that like with PlayStation, Activision's had a long-standing relationship with Xbox, and that could be affected by this report if Activision Blizzard doesn't take appropriate action like firing Bobby Kotick. Jason Schreier added additional insight with Xbox and PlayStation both now sending out forceful internal statements about Activision Blizzard, pressures growing on the board to remove embattled CEO Bobby Kotick. Spencer said he and his executive team are disturbed and deeply troubled by the horrific events and actions at Activision Blizzard following this week's revelations that Bobby Kotick knew for years about sexual harassment and was himself a perpetrator of misconduct. In response to this skating criticism from Xbox and PlayStation, an Activision spokesperson tells Bloomberg, We respect all feedback from our valued partners and we are committed to the work of ensuring our culture and workplace are safe, diverse, and inclusive. Translation, okay, whatever, cool. Bobby Kotick is still our man. Let's get one thing motherfucking straight. So long as Bobby Kotick remains CEO of Activision Blizzard, this workplace culture will never be safe, diverse, or inclusive. Get him out. Here's the Bloomberg article covering Phil Spencer speaking out, noting how in a staff to email, he said what was already quoted in Jason's tweets, alongside this type of behavior has no place in our industry. Spencer also went a step further than Jim Ryan by saying he would take action. The article notes how Activision has a long history with Xbox and talks about a petition that I'll bring up in a bit. But yeah, Activision's statement has basically just been, we respect your statement, but no indication that they're going to take tangible and impactful action that will offer relief to those disgusted by this whole situation. But yeah, that petition mentioned the article that at the time was signed by over 500 former and current Activision Blizzard employees. Well, that number quickly grew to 1,200 signatures by the evening of November 18th. And in the days that followed, that count would grow to over 1,500 employees. On top of all of these factions criticizing Activision Blizzard or protesting against them, Shareholders are also joining in, as reported here by Shannon Liao from Washington Post. Exclusive Activision Blizzard shareholders call on CEO Bobby Kotick to resign and the board's two longest serving directors, Brian Kelly and Robert Morgato, to retire by December 31st. The shareholders sent a letter to the board of directors this morning. Here we have the article in question and scrolling down, we can find additional details like this quote from the letter sent by SOC Investment Group, which reads, in contrast to past company statements, 
statement, CEO Bobby Kotick was aware of many incidents of sexual harassment, assault, and discrimination at Activision Blizzard, but failed either to ensure that the executives and managers responsible were terminated or to recognize and address the systematic nature of the company's hostile workplace culture. And they threatened that if CEO Bobby Kotick and board of directors members Brian Kelly and Robert Morgato don't retire and resign by December 31st, then the SOC would not vote for the re-election of the current directors on the board at the next annual shareholder meeting in June, and they would urge other shareholders to follow. And here we have another quote from SOC Executive Director Dieter Weisnegger, who said after the new revelations, it's clear that the current leadership repeatedly failed to uphold a safe workplace, a basic function of their job. Yeah, Activision Blizzard needs a new CEO, board chair, and lead independent director with the expertise skill set and conviction to truly change the company's culture we need to really have a reset button on the board i could not agree more the soc also expressed that after the resignation of kelly and morgado they'd like to see one of those board of director seats be filled by an activision employee that is not an executive so they actually have a seat at the table which is the last thing activision blizzard wants give employees power that's why they hired wilmer hale the union busting firm to act like they're on the side of employees, but they have a history of always siding with corporations and not to mention they have a personal relationship with Activision Blizzard executives, so there's just a conflict of interest there. And it's not just the SOC who's on board with this proposal. The letter was also signed by a number of organizations who are protesting against Activision Blizzard as well. Here's one more quote from the SOC director who told the Washington Post, votes against directors are very rare. Investors rarely take this step. You need to have a clear governance fail. And now we believe we can point to not only an overpaid CEO, but we have very clear implications for recruiting talent at the company and potential legal ramifications with regulators like the California Agency, the DFEH, I believe is what he's referring to, and the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, who's representing investors who are peeved at the lack of disclosure on the part of Bobby Kotick in regard to conflicts and issues and harassment allegations and all that stuff happening within the company, that's an indication that something went very wrong. Now, it's important to note that while all of this is no small deal, the SOC doesn't have as much influence as some people might think. Jason Schreier tweeted and clarified that I'm seeing a lot of big reactions to the story, but some important context. This group, SOC, owns 4.8 million shares or just 0.6% of Activision Blizzard. So unless other larger investment groups or individual investors join in protest, it's hard to say how much impact they can truly have. As Jason put it, SOC has been criticizing Kotick for a long time. This isn't a turnaround or shift in view from them. This is not the first time that the SOC has tried to make Bobby Kotick face the consequences of his actions and negligence and see some form of accountability. Now, they do have more ammo with the publishing of that bombshell Wall Street Journal article, but they don't have as much influence as some people might think, so how much they can accomplish is still in doubt. Jason added, SOC is an activist shareholder group representing a very small fraction of the company. While it's possible that the Activision Blizzard board will change its mind about Kotick, particularly if more stories come to light, this particular statement isn't exactly unexpected. Now, Stephen Totillo from Axios added to the conversation by noting that this isn't nothing, at least. They have gotten non-binding no votes regarding pay for EA execs, came close with Activision, and have won concessions regarding bonuses, at least from EA. Their call for Kotick to resign doesn't have much behind it, but threats to vote down board members aren't toothless. And yeah, that's true. You never know the kind of ripple effect that the SOC can have. But Jason emphasizes that I think a lot of people sharing and reading this article are under the impression that this is a majority of shareholders, not 0.6% which is an important point of clarification. Industry insider Daniel Akhmad explains in a string of tweets further why this is ultimately an uphill battle with tweets that read, the power of capital is such that it's extremely unlikely something changes unless it gets to a point where there is significant material impact to current or future sales that prompts a majority of the investors board to intervene because that's more important to them. It's all about the money. You have to hit the money if all of this somehow starts negatively affecting Activision Blizzard financially, then the board of directors and major investors will consider ousting Bobby Kotick, which is why it's so important that major players like 
PlayStation and Xbox remain resolute in their stances and actually take action against Activision so that they will reconsider their position so that Bobby Kotick can be ousted and true change can happen. These people don't feel bad about their lack of action against the culture of harassment. They don't care about the fact that they're hated near universally as long as they're raking it in. You know, that that's all they're happy about. If profits are ultimately unaffected and not disrupted, then there's no reason for the board of directors or investors to feel like the company needs a change of leadership, which is why it's important to keep applying pressure on all fronts, be it the community members, the media, other gaming industry heads and corporations, investors, government officials and regulators, you name it. We got to keep twisting that arm until it becomes a liability, a financial liability to keep Bobby Kotick around. And then that might influence votes and stances on whether Bobby Kotick should remain CEO of Activision Blizzard. Daniel Ahmad continues, Kotick is the founder and largest shareholder, which counts for a lot. Yeah, the shareholders that have called for him to step down only have a 1%, less than 1% stake, referring to the SOC's 0.6% stake. The majority of investors are silent those fucking ass kissers. Sony and Microsoft have made statements, but products are still sold through those platforms. Again, are they going to actually take action or do they say what they said just to say it, just to get some brownie points? Daniel Ahmad also mentions that while the number of signatures on that petition is impressive, 1,300 people actually closer to 1,500 have signed, but 8,000 plus haven't because ultimately people fear being fired or blacklisted from the industry. So in other words, it's the material impact from a strike, investor board action, or losing the ability to sell products that result in actual change. Could not have put it better myself. Daniel Ahmad then emphasizes that he's not trying to act like it's impossible for a change to happen. He's just outlining the uphill battle that this all is. And then finally tweeted that if Sony and Microsoft follow up on their statements with action, that may very well prompt Kotick to finally step down in a quiet manner with honorable discharge and likely some financial care package that he doesn't deserve. But as long as he's out of this freaking industry, and just any industry for that matter, that would make me happy. But, you know, given his standing as an executive, no doubt he would just find employment elsewhere and find a way to ruin people in that company. Stephen Totillo from Axios also highlighted in a string of tweets why this is all an uphill battle. Also notable is that we haven't seen calls for Codex ouster from ABK leadership. No studio had signing petition, few credit topping creatives. Could be meaningful if it happens. And in a new article from Jason Schreier, it was noted how employees across the board are telling Bloomberg that they're underwhelmed by a series of meetings held today to address the ongoing crisis. Executives repeated talking points and defended Bobby Kotick as calls for his ousting grow louder. As seen in the Bloomberg article itself, Activision president Rob Kostich told people in his group that Kotick wouldn't be resigning the piece of shit. Bloomberg also covered some statements relayed by Chief Operating Officer Daniel Allegre, who denied that the recent announcement that Activision Blizzard employees would be getting extra days off during Thanksgiving week had anything to do with trying to alleviate the impact of the Wall Street Journal article. There's suspicions that Activision Blizzard gave those extra days, bracing themselves for this article that they knew was coming out to try to boost morale before shit hits the fan. Allegre denied that this was the reason they did it. I don't believe them. And Allegri also addressed the reported pay disparity between Yabara and Jen O'Neill. And the way he put it was, once again, that she was paid differently. They never say she was paid less. They just say differently. But yeah, Allegra said that O'Neill was paid differently from Yabara because of complications involving cash and equity that they were both offered the exact same compensation. Sounds like a whole lot of bullshit. Given that these executives are beholden to defending the company and given the myriad lies that they've already told even after the DFEH lawsuit came about that exposed the culture of harassment. Yeah, I don't believe anything they say for a single second. Employees aren't buying into these executives' bullshits. During those video calls, many employees have continuously called for Bobby Kotick's ousting, and many employees are even publicly demanding on their own personal Twitter feeds that the CEO be fired, knowing that they may face consequences, but also realizing how bad it would look if... Uh, Activision Blizzard fire someone for simply saying what they want to say about a company whose culture has been negatively impacted by Bobby Kotick's 
poor and negligent leadership. The article finally notes that Yabara, the remaining co-leader of Blizzard, assured employees that our best years are ahead of us, but with low morale and Kotick still in place, some employees are skeptical about that. As am I. Until Bobby Kotick's gone, I will never believe that Blizzard has their best years ahead of them. But as I previously mentioned, it's going to be an uphill battle, especially considering when the board of directors who have the power to oust Bobby Kotick is comprised of longtime friends and pals of Bobby Kotick's, described as an old boys club that's made lots and lots of money by sticking with him. So on top of personal relationships between CEO Bobby Kotick and board of directors members, getting in the way of them being able to render an unbiased verdict on his standing as a leader, they're also all just greedy fucks. And as long as Bobby Kotick is making the money, even if it is at the expense of customers and employees, they're more than happy to keep him around. Morality does not come into it one bit. There is no telling what the future holds. There is no telling whether enough action will be taken across the board from various factions. But an opportunity has certainly presented itself, especially with that bombshell Wall Street Journal article being published. It's going to be up to individuals and organizations with influence to take action and to put enough fire underneath Bobby Kotick's feet that he'll eventually back out. I'm looking at you, Xbox and PlayStation especially. You've said your piece, now show us that you mean it. But that's just one man's take on the situation and everything you need to know about the latest developments surrounding Activision Blizzard. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on all this. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.